Good evening. My name is Felix Obi. This is uh, Economics 330, Global Trade and Political Economy, Medgar Evers College, City University of New York. Uh, today is Tuesday, November 28th, and this is Office Hour Lecture. This week, we are going to cover um, the term paper. And I shared the, um, I shared uh, the assignment, I think, uh, a couple of weeks ago to allow enough time, but I kind of wanted to uh, also go over uh, some of the asks for the time paper. So we're all, uh, uh, we're all on the same page. So I'm going to share my screen and also be able to speak through this and hopefully between this year, uh, this video and sharing my screen and for us being able to respond to email uh, that um, students, and, and of course, taking questions at the end of the class that our students have the best opportunity to put in their best effort. Um, so without much ado, I'm going to uh, uh, share my screen. Uh-huh. So <clears throat> now we're in business. Um, so instructions for for the term paper. Um, so your term project is an integrative summary of seven short papers. So there's going to need to be seven separate short papers journal articles, newspaper um, publications. Um, so I will just give the class, and I probably should have said this a little bit earlier uh, in the semester. I have a habit of listening to our morning show. Even on my drive, I listen to morning show, the morning show on MSNBC. I listen to it on an app called Chini. Um, and it gives me a hint of what's in the papers. So I kind of do selective reading. So I know what I, my reading is going to cover the Atlantic or New York Times or Washington Post or whatever there is a good article on the economist. But it gives me a good line of sight on what the uh, topics for the day is. And if you were to do that, you will probably find lots of meaty articles to sink your teeth into with respect to selecting the uh, seven papers, short papers. <clears throat> so these papers may be from academic literature or current news on international trade issues and political economy policies from anywhere in the world. The term paper should be no longer than 10 pages. Again, please note that, that a penalty will be imposed for not adhering to the page limit. Part of the test, part of the test here is not so much is not just the content of your paper, but the ability to follow instruction and be able to stay within um, uh, that instruction. So you are required to summarize seven journal articles or papers selected from the following topics: trade policy, that's one; two economic analysis, three, economic historical analysis, four, trade conflict, five, regional arrangements, six, international diplomacy, seven, international political economic perspectives. So as you know, there is a, um, 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 the, uh, the liberal order, there is a Marxist and you're supposed to, you could pick any one of those. The term paper should begin with a title page. So re remember that the paper should not be longer than 10 pages. And one, the first of those 10 pages will be a title page. The next page should be a summary section that describes how each of the seven papers is related to each other. So I was uh, in, 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 in part of a, a conversation before the formal class started, I was saying to a student that if you really wanted to flex, you could pick seven different topics and then um, try to weave 
a narrative, a common narrative between the seven papers. But again, that would be really flexing for the sake of flex, uh, showing up for the sake of showing up. Um, because the second paper, the second page has to draw a consist a, a commonality or a theme, a common theme across the seven uh, articles that you pick. So the next page should be a summary section that describes how each of the seven paper is related to each other. Page number three begins with the next session after the summary should be an authored bibliography of the seven papers stating the following. One, the author's name. Two, title of the article and three, where it is published. Now, I will post on Blackboard a sample APA style or MA, MA, MLA style annotated bibliography. And very quickly, if I can find it, I would share it uh, right now. Um, so this is a sample annotated bibliography. Let me see if I can open it. So this is kind of what it looks like. It obviously doesn't have to be this big because it doesn't have to be this part, doesn't have to be this lengthy because it's really just a newspaper article. So this is what this, if you wanted to use an APA style, this is what it looks like. Um, the last name, uh, um, middle name, then the last name, middle name, and the last name, middle name. So in this APA style, there are three other authors to this paper, and it was published in 1986. Non-family living and erosion of traditional family orientation. This, so this is the name of the article here, and this is the name of the journal where it is published. And this is a brief uh, thingy about what the story is about, and this could be more than two, no more than two sentences. So this is what an annotated bibliography is. Most of the articles you are going to pick, I have to so imagine, will probably have just one author, and then it will be the name of the author last name, first name, initial, year it was published, name of title of article, and um, the publication. Um, if it's, um, a, um, if it's a, um, a scholarly journal, then you would have the numbers for the scholarly journal. This is an example using the MLA style. So there are two dominant styles in referencing uh, when you're writing an academic paper, it's MLA or APA. So this is the MLA style. I am agnostic to what style you adopt. Again, I will probably trim this fat a little bit on this and remove some of this section so it doesn't become so confusing. And also put this up on Blackboard so that if anybody wants a little bit more clarity on what um, an annotated bibliography should look like, that would be it. But again, as I said, I'll put that up as well. So just to recap, so we don't lose track, um, the paper should start with a title page. The second page should be a summary section. I would keep that summary section to no more than one page, honestly, of how the seven articles you pick, the title of the seven articles and how they are connected to each other. Then the third page, would be the annotated bibliography. So there'll be seven annotated bi bibliographies, entries, because you're picking seven articles. Then the section after that will be a summary of each of the seven papers. Now let's drill down into the guidelines and standards for the paper. Significantly, it is important that the topic for your paper is not overly broad. So identify a narrow topic. Kindly note that if your selection, if, if you select a broad topic such as global political economy, you will be penalized um, uh, up to 30 points because that's just, it's too broad to have a substantive, a succinct uh, uh, paper. Read the seven articles uh, on your selected topic Every article you read must be at least three pages long. If you read an article that is not at least three pages long, 
such an article will not count as one of your seven articles. Remember, you're going to give an annotated bibliography. So I'm going to be able to see the article and be able to see the art, seven articles that you're referencing. I should be able to find them. Provide a, a web link if there is one. And I'm going to add that to the annotated bibliography. Summarize each article in one page or at least three quarters of a page. More than one page is more than one page too long. Less than three quarter of a page will be too short. Write an integ integrative summary that ties the articles together and identify or describe lessons learned or conclusions. The thesis. This integrative summary, as I've previously mentioned, precedes the summary of each of the seven articles. There should be a title page. Let me reiterate that again. At the end of your document, again, let me reiterate again, a bibliography. Those are important because this is the only way to confirm if the article that you're referencing actually meets the three-page criteria. My cheat sheet to the extent that there is one. And again, it's easier to stick to what you know. Um, so again, this this part of it I've already is already on the blackboard on the announcement for uh, for 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 the paper. Um, so I'm I just bring this up to make this um document a little bit more familiar, but I'm going to also post it on Blackboard, if not tonight, first thing tomorrow morning. I'm also going to post an, 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 a sample annotated bibliography, and I will send those reminders out as email as well. So students, you all get a prompt to check them. Don't overthink this assignment. So let me stop sharing. Don't overthink the assignment. What the point that I was gonna make is that if uh, to the extent that there is a cheat sheet, I would focus on the papers that I've read through the semester that I have some familiarity with. If there are any number of papers that you've worked on that meet the criteria, any number of the reading assignments that meet the criteria of three pages, use it. You've already commented on it. You've already responded to your classmates comment on it. Don't reinvent the wheel unless you have to. That is how I am at approach. It. Because again, you also want to follow your passion. If you're passionate and you really want to challenge yourself to say, I bet as this disparate as several issues in global political economy may appear on the surface. If I dig deep, dig, dig deep, I bet there are common threads that run through them and I'm going to figure it out. That's also lovely, that's passion. That's the kind of stuff I would do. Um, but that is not necessary. Um, I allowed more weeks than I was required to because I truly want um, um, everyone to do well with this paper. Um, I staggered the class a bit because I wanted to have this week to be able to go through the, the paper knowing that next week we have the final lecture to, to, to uh, cover before the final exam. So don't overthink it. Um, just follow the instructions. If there are any confusions, let me know. I'll be glad to uh, I'll be glad to provide some clarity. So this is really the paper in a nutshell. Um, seven sources, no more than ten, no more than ten are um, um, pages uh, total. Uh, you start with 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 a, 
uh, a cover page um, that you also make sure that each of the seven papers are at least three pages long. If it's three, two and three quarter pages, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make a big deal out of that. But it can be three and one, two and one third. That that would that would not pass muster. Um, officially three pages. Try to get to three pages to the extent you can, and that would be very helpful. I don't want to make things great where they're not necessary. Um, what I really am hoping is to show or demonstrate an understanding of the issues, right? Um, you could also, just as one example, if, 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 if someone selected, uh, let's say, trade policies, economic analysis, economic historical analysis, trade conflicts, regional arrangements, international diplomacy, um, I I could honestly see the I could honestly see how you could find an article at random on each of these and still find a common thread, a common thread that runs through them. So if you were, for instance, to take the liberal order, right? The liberal order uh believes it was based in a national system that facilitates sets the ground rules for trade with respect to all trade organization is able to adjudicate trade disputes the rules based system also uh um envisions and supports the Britain Woods architecture, which is the World Bank IMF. Um, the IMF, of course, is uh, there to stabilize uh, uh, the financial standing of government so they are able to uh, function and be able to finance their imports and, and exports and be able to be productive. The World Bank has a over, more overarching agenda to stop global hunger or global poverty. Uh, through project assistance and uh, and project finance assistance. So if you were to look at the global order and you were to pick any article on trade policy, you could make the argument about how the global order, whatever institution it is in the global order, or the principle of the international order, the liberal order, can help facilitate those trade policies. If you pick an economic analysis of a country, whether the country is doing well, that means they are probably a net contributor to the funding of the uh, World Trade Organization. If a country is faced with more challenges, they are probably receiving facilities from, um, again, the international institutions, either from the World Bank or the IMF. And that's what uh, that economic analysis will suggest, that the economic analysis it becomes um, the basis for countries to be able to measure or gauge the level of engagement, be it as a creditor or uh, uh, as as as, a, as 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 an equity holder in any of the global institu financial institutions. You could do an economic historical analysis, however micro or macro whether it is a country, region, or trade system, and say, how has, to what extent has the liberal order or the rules-based system helped influence the results of this analysis? You could pick an article that does this as economic historical analysis. You could pick trade conflict as an example. And then whatever the article says, in what way has uh, uh, the rules-based system been helpful in adjudicating the trade conflict, whatever it says in the article, or to what extent might the rules-based system need to be strengthened to be able to deal with this, with whatever trade conflict you're referring to, to the extent that it was unable to address the concerns of the parties to the conflict. 
Then there are regional arrangements. Regional arrangements in and of themselves is an affirmation of the rules-based system of the international order, right? It is a regional system uh, that is rules-based that are band together uh, to form a, a trade union or a common market or just uh, uh, a customs union. And we've gone through this. And those are all part of the regional versus international uh, order. There is international diplomacy. You can't have an international rules-based system without an international diplomacy. So any document on international diplomacy would be able to, to uh, reflect that. Then there's the international political economy perspective. Of course, we've already picked one of the perspectives, which is, which is the uh, liberal order. The liberal order, just to know, note, is the same as the rules-based international order. So that would be the common theme. I would actually start, pick one of the uh, international political economy perspectives, whichever you think you can more forcefully make the case with and see how it's impacted or reflected, pick an article from each of the other six and see how the outcomes that those article cover is reflect or is impacted with the subset of international political economy that you want to highlight. That's one way to go about it. It is by no means the only way to go about it. And I, you know, it, I, I'm not imposing or expecting that you follow this format. It is just to demonstrate how easily you can find a common thread amongst seven, between seven different journal articles or newspaper articles that cover the gamut of these seven topics and be able to draw a common thread through, uh, through those uh, topics. That is the only point that I make. I do not say this to say that that is how it must be, absolutely not. So um, again, the key operative thing here is do not overthink it, absolutely not. Just follow the guidelines and get, source your papers. Once you have your seven papers, source them and really think it through. What, what is the common theme here? And how do you backward engineer a common theme? Um, so, Again, if you have any questions, read, reach out, but I'm going to try to put clear instructions on Blackboard. I am going to also put a sample bibliography that is not, perhaps I, just looking at the one that I have, the bottom section is a little too detailed where it describes the article. I'm gonna keep it a lot simpler um, and, and then see how that works out. But again, I'm wishing everyone luck. Um, any questions, or do you want me to take questions offline? Um, the topic, Professor, is sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, so whatever I'm writing about, I'm going to make a topic from that. Correct? How do you mean? Um, so you remember you have all these different topics that we're choosing from so we have the um mm -hmm. so we have trade politics we have economic analysis so within the um articles that we're choosing that's where we're going to get the topic from or we're taking a topic from one of these or several okay. of these okay so um <laughs> so one of your papers mm -hmm. right has to so let me share my screen again for a sec um if you don't mind uh, let, me share my, let me share my screen again for a second. So, um, share. So, one of the papers mm -hmm. has to be, has to be about trade policies, right? Mm -hmm. So, so let's say what's a trade policy? Remember we covered. Um, so let's let's actually do a live Google. Let's let's just say your. Can you see my? Can you see my Zoom page? 
Yeah, I'm seeing your screen. Uh, okay, so okay, so let's just do a live uh uh search. Uh, say um, trade policy, right? Let's just um, let's see what comes up. Uh, so let's see what comes up. Okay, so you see, even Google is giving me some ideas. Protectionist trade policies are designed to protectionist trade policies. But let's even not try to get too cute. Let's just put in trade policy. Professor, I can't yeah. see that part. I'm only seeing the part that you shared before. Oh, so oh, you're not seeing my my uh, my my uh... the, the the one that you pull up just no no I'm not seeing that. Oh, okay, <laughs> my bad. Hold on, let me. Uh, okay, let me stop. Let me let me then share my. Uh... So can you see uh, uh, my Google page? Yes, my Google yes I've not seen that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I put trade policy, right? Because mm -hmm. remember, that's the number number one thing. And now right. Google is saying trade policy examples. Mm -hmm. So what I really want is a paper that is uh, um, three pages long, right? So let mm -hmm. me just say, uh, let me actually preface it and say U.S. Trade policy. Um, let's say with China. Why not? Because um, yeah, we've um, covered a lot of China stuff. For this yes, semester. we have. Yes, yeah. we have. Okay, so this is the Council on Foreign Relations. The Council yeah. on Foreign Relations. I'm biased, but I think it is probably the premier foreign policy international relations organization for Americans. So, um, so this is an article um, on uh, foreign relations. Um, so it says that uh, the contentious U.S.-China trade relations, mm -hmm. uh, the trade between the two, the world's uh, two biggest economies has ballooned in recent decades, bringing significant benefits, but also perils that have led to calls to rethink their relationship. So uh, so here's a summary. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm guessing that this is about more than three pages long, right? I'm right. guessing, but if you say print to PDF, it will tell you exactly how many pages it is. But I'm guessing this is more than three pages long. But let's even really look at the summary. And I'm glad you're asking this question that way and uh, the video, uh, the recording is going to be on Blackboard and be up front in, in terms of how to think this through. So let's just look at the summary. Mm -hmm. U.S.-China trade exploded in the two decades after China joined the World Trade Organization in 2000. This article has, this trade has benefited U.S. and Chinese consumers and companies, but officials in Washington are increasingly concerned about the risk Posed by Beijing state led development. President Biden has maintained tariffs on Chinese goods and introduced new trade restrictions in efforts to reshape the bilateral trade relationship. So, if I were searching for articles on uh, the first, which is trade policy, I will stop right here i have found my article because what i would want to do is this we have had several classes that covered the theme that is on the three major um Perspective, three major perspectives on international political economy. And I've always been philosophically, and this is the beauty of, 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 uh, of, of, of uh, liberal arts, that you can have a healthy debate in the social sciences field and be almost just about right, right? It's your ability to frame your argument. I've, but I've always been philosophically biased in support of the liberal order, which is a rules-based system. A major 
component of the rules-based system is the international. So the common theme, when I have that second paper, when I make the argue, that second page where I make the argument of the common theme around the seven articles that I pick, I'm going to say that I would identify how adherence to a rules-based international system can facilitate growth for all parties. And when countries fall short of a rules-based of, of the spirit and norms of a rules-based international order, it creates tension in the global political economy. So if you follow the rules, these articles, seven articles on seven different topics, would reflect how when you follow the rules, it can be of mutual benefit to the trading partners partners. And when the rules are not followed, it can create unnecessary and, av and avoidable oh, wow. tension. Um, one way to look at it is, and all the summary here is going to be reflected in the rest of the paper. So when China trade between US and China exploded, i.e. grew exponentially, in the two decades after China joined the World Trade Organization. So once China started playing by the international rules, or at least accepted to play by international rules by joining the World Trade Organization, trade between China and the largest economy, the United States, grew, presumably to the benefit of both parties. The article even goes on to say that this trade has benefited US and Chinese consumers and companies. So when you play by the rules, it works. Then it goes on to say, but officials in Washington are increasingly concerned about what the risk. Yes. Oh, sorry, Professor. No, go ahead. Absolutely. Yes. I, think no, I, was on, on mute. I thought I was on mute all this time. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, so, um, so you can see how the second side of that argument goes. When you don't follow the rules, it can create avoidable tension. And here is how that avoidable tension will be manifest. I bet you my last penny through the rest of the article is... President Biden maintaining tariffs on Chinese goods and introduce new trade restrictions in an effort to reshape the bilateral relations. So this one article has demonstrated how countries can benefit when they follow a rules-based international system. In this case, as represented by the World Trade Organization. And when countries break the rules and or the spirit of a rules-based system and employ non-market or uneconomic policies through subsidies as one example, and we have covered subsidies, and I bet you there will be subsidy, part of the issues the United States will raise will be subsidy. So if you were to do control F, and this is without me having read this article, and I promise you I have not read it. So if you were to do control F, um, let me see, uh, subsidy. So if you were to do a search of subsidy, um, Oh no, he pulled me up and took me to another article. We don't want to do that. Um, but I am pretty, pretty sure. I am, I could bet my last penny that um, I am not sure why um, Control F isn't working. Oh yeah, oh, it's, it's working. Oh, sorry, it's, it's in the bottom. Subsidy. Ah, see, here's the first subsidy. 
the so look at this. The optimism that accompanied China's entry into the World Trade Organization 20 years ago vanished as Beijing embraced state state led development, pouring in subsidies into targeted industry to the detriment of foreign of US and foreign companies. When you begin to subsidize and engage on anti-competitive trade practices that runs counter to the rules of international trade, it creates tension. So this one article actually um, highlights it. So in just looking for this one article, in, the, in my first search, that's where I will stop. If I were to stop, if I were to go to the next one, which is economic analysis, right? Uh, can you see my uh, Google search page? Yes, Professor, I can. <clears throat> okay, so if I were to go to economic analysis, um, e uh, US economic uh, analysis, uh, uh, China, U.S. trade. Because now I want to stay consistent because that's uh, economic analysis. So Google actually helps me at an economic analysis of the U.S.-China trade conflict. Because now I want to stay consistent to that while staying true to the seven questions, uh, seven topics. So if I do a search of that, now I see an article from the Wall Trade Organization. What could be better than that? Um, I'm betting this article is more than three pages long and there is a download section, actually it's 36 pages. So again, looking at the, uh, at, 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 at the highlight, this paper provides an economic analysis of the trade conflict between the US and China, providing an overview of the tariff increases. Remember, Biden placing a tariff and China, of course, I'm keeping the tariffs that came from the Trump era. So I would say, so and bilateral tariffs have increased on average 17% between US and China. And the phase one agreement signed in January 2020 between the two countries only least minor reductions in the tariff to uh, 16%. The trade conflict has led to sizable reductions in trade between 2019, between US and China in 2019. So I will stop right here for my second paper. If you remember, the first paper makes an assertion that the first paper, the first example the, from the for, uh, Council on Foreign Relations paper uh, uh, looks at trade policies and actually argues, and the, 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 uh, the point that I will make is that this paper highlights the economic advantages when countries engage in a rules-based international order. As an example, this paper argues that trade between China and the United States increased uh, uh, in order of magnitude in the first 20 years to the benefit of companies and individuals in both countries. Then I will go on to say the article also suggests that because the United States believes that China has engaged in a non-competitive on economic behavior, in particular tariffs. It is now placing, in particular subsidies, it is now placing tariffs on Chinese products and goods and services. In fact, that's when I will pivot. The second article, which is an article from the World Trade Organization, which conducted an economic analysis, finds that because of bilateral tariffs between the United States and China. And the economic analysis finds that uh, tariffs have increased to 17% between the US and China 
and the and that uh, I will just say between the two and lead to a minor reduction in tariffs. The trade so I'll just say that the finds that the trade conflict has led to a sizable reduction in the trade between U.S. and China in 2019, and is accompanied by considerable trade diversion to imports from other regions. So again, this supports the central thesis of my paper, of what my paper would have been, that even an economic analysis by the World Trade Organization supports the fact that there is real negative economic consequence when countries don't follow when when countries don't follow a rules based international order and create a counter reaction from their trading parties that's what this analysis would suggest so if i were to if i were to uh, go back and you you truly don't don't need to make this much more and and again, I accept that this is what I do professionally, and perhaps it's it's second nature to me. Um, but honestly, it doesn't need to be more too complicated. So, um, if you do an economic and historical analysis, and I will just stick to the same thing, uh, I will do a U.S. versus China. GDP, as an example. So I would look at how GDP, as you know, is the total value of the uh, GDP means gross domestic product, which is the total value of the goods and services in a country, right? Um, I would try to link an explosion, and I bet you there is a correlation and not just a correlation, a causal relationship between um, the growth in GDP for China and the United States and China's entry into the World Trade Organization. Or put differently, that China's economy has grown exponentially since it joined the World Trade Organization. The World Trade Organization, of course, being one of the major um, um, uh, international rules-based system organizations. So that's what I would do, and that's how I would keep it simple. Honestly, for each one that you Google, um, you don't have to go through more than three uh, links to find good paper. OK, the great economic rivalry, this would be this would be the perfect paper. You know, when this gets really challenging, this is from the Harvard Kennedy Center, uh, Harvard Kennedy School, the Belfort Center. This would be the paper. You, you could actually read the executive summary and grab everything you need to grab from this paper to see whether it makes your point or not. And, and I will bet you my last penny and I, I have covered economic convergence previously in this class, that there has been greater economic convergence between China and the United States since China joined the World Trade Organization. Excuse me about that. Convergence, of course, means that China's economy is growing close to parity with the United States. But let me stop sharing and stop talking and uh, uh, maybe perhaps be able to take questions to the extent that there is one, because I get really passionate and excited about this stuff. No, Professor, that that's um, the explanation is much more um, clearer because I was doing something completely different. Okay. Yeah, so I have a better, like a real um, great understanding of what I'm supposed to do now. <clears throat> I'm very tired, Professor, so my voice is going. It was That's my okay. birthday when you set all those assignments and I was trying to get the assignments out the way to get my birthday in. So it was a long weekend. Well, I, I guess for good reason, happy birthday to you. Thank you. And many more happy returns.
Yes, thank you so much. But yeah, this 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 is very helpful. Um, I'm actually glad I came on because I have a better understanding of how to start and finish. I'm pretty sure I'm excited and I look forward to your paper and indeed everyone's paper and I'm confident you're gonna knock it out of the ballpark. Um, um, and and I and I'm looking forward and I, and I, and I'm truly confident that the class will the class. The we've had robust conversations that in you know in the class that I think has equipped each and every student um, with the tools to be able to write um, to be able to draw a linkage between these seven topics. Um, and I'm going to post this um, guidelines on Blackboard that way um, to help with structure. Sure. But I honestly believe that at this point that folks have a uh, folks have the knowledge. And again, reach me by email. Uh, yeah. um, and um, while I will not write the paper for the class, I'm glad to provide guidance. I've always said I'm rooting for everyone and I want everyone to earn good grades. Um, okay. And next week, uh, just uh, to round things up, uh, next week. Um, Next week uh, will be on current trends in international political economy. That's an exciting topic, and uh, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, but uh, in the absence of any other questions, I am going to finish the lecture and stop the recording. Uh, any opposition to that? No, Professor. Continue. Go ahead. All right. Mm -hmm.